Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today what I'm going to be bringing you is episode 9 of my FIFA 22 Bradford City career mode. Now apologies for not uploading this for around two weeks, something like that. I've had some problems with my Elgato and my OBS, it's just been saying no signal constantly or one moment please and it's working completely fine or else the actual display wouldn't come up on my TV, it'd just come up with no signal on there but for some reason on OBS it's just not been working so thankfully I've got it to finally work to a back with the career mode in today's episode though for you guys we have newcastle away in the carabao cup we have forest green at home in league two and we also have sutton united away in the fa cup now if you do go on to enjoy today's video please make sure you drop a like on it. if you could try and hit 15 likes on today's episode that'd be massively appreciated subscribe if you are new as well we are now on the road to 200 subscribers trying to hit that by the end of the year so if you could subscribe that would be greatly appreciated and I shall see you all in a second once I've picked the team for this game against Newcastle. This is the game that I'm going to be playing in today's episode. Now, with me not playing FIFA since the last episode, this could not go well. Let's get into it. Here we have it then. This is the team that I'm going to be using for this game away to Newcastle. Now, it's the same team that you would usually expect, except I've made one massive call. I have dropped club captain Niall Canavan down to the bench. Now, he's not 100% fit. But Staunton has pretty much 20 better pace than him. And against Premier League strikers like maybe Dwight Gale might play, you know, you are going to need that pace. You've been caught out quite a lot in terms of pace in the last couple of episodes. So he's come in for Canavan. The team then is O'Donnell, a back four of Threlkeld, Pordy, Staunton and Rydhouse. Songo and Watt as the two holding midfielders. Vernon on the right, Issa on the left and Callum Cook in behind Andy Cook. We've also got Angle coming in on the bench for Theo Robinson. Let's get into this match though against Newcastle. He's going to be a tough one, but we're doing quite well in the Carabao Cup so far. Their probable lineup looks like a 5-3-2. So that is going to be pretty hard to break down with just the one striker. Could maybe see Angle coming on quite early on in that second half. If it isn't working, let's get into it. Here we have it then, away at the, well, it used to be called the Sports Direct Arena, at St. James's Park. It's a big day out for the Bradford City fans. If we got something like this in real life, it'd be pretty nice. It will be Newcastle to get us underway. I mean, it Getting something like this in the cup means you actually got the win in the first round of your cup competitions, which we, we've not done in years in pretty much all the competitions, to be honest. Newcastle attacking forward here. I think that's Joe Linton's played the ball through to Matt Ritchie. Threlkeld just can't keep up. Ball comes in and Dwight Gale heads home. 12 minutes on the clock. The Geordies take the lead. And we just got caught out, a lack of pace, we just couldn't keep up. Richie with the ball in, Dwight Gill scores for fun against teams that aren't Premier League clubs. And it's now Newcastle 1, Bradford City now. We had a chance at the other end, Andy Cook couldn't get onto the end of it. They've counter-attacked us and it's Dwight Gale in the end who's put the ball in the back of a net. And less than a quarter of an hour on the clock, we fall behind. Newcastle come forward again here, we've got a lot of players out of position. He has a good challenge though from Elliot Watt. Pordy clears up to Andy Cook, good header down into Callum Cook, beats a man, tries to find Aboisa up against Manquillo, Issa's always going to win that race, Aboisa bursting into the penalty area now, takes a shot on, good save from the keeper, how's that not gone in? How has that not gone in? Let's come back to Andy Cook here, Chance still not alive, still he's alive, throw Kel, yes, come on, oh my god, just before half time we're finally back level, I've no idea how many bites at the cherry we needed there clearly quite a lot Issa had a chance he had an, and then in, instantly had another chance cook had a chance in there bloody hell thankfully it's managed to find its way into the back of the net though it's oscar threlkeld of all people who's come up with the goal it's a great finish to be fair i don't know if it's a volley or a half volley but either way he's found the bottom corner it's a fantastic finish and we'll absolutely take it just before half time we've managed to level the score obviously steve bruce is still the manager of newcastle on this save as well Threll killed with the goal though, as we approach half time, it's literally the last kick of the first half pretty much, and it's Newcastle won, Bradford City won, a big goal from Oscar Threll who's not particularly had a great game to be honest, but we well and truly are in this game, he's absolutely shattered though, do we have a right back on the bench? No we don't, Folds can, Folds can play right back. I mean, Threlkeld just scored and now he's been subbed off. Yeah, Matty Folds can play right back. Substitution made at the break then. Let's get into the second half and it will be Andy Cook to get us underway. Come on, City. Oh, well done, Jan Songo. That's fantastic. And he's found the ball into Abo Issa as well. He's got the pace on Fabian Shah every day of the week. Issa, loads of space. He's going to clip one in towards Andy Cook. I think it's the Bravka who's punched it there. Back to Abo Issa on the ball. He's got a bit of space here. He's just going to keep going. He's Abo Issa and he's going to hit one. Oh my God, that's a big chance. 
and he's absolutely spooned it. That is a fantastic chance for Abouisa and he's absolutely blazed it over the bar. He's nearly hit Songo in the head. Oh, he's got a score. Let's make some subs. 58 minutes on the clock. We'll make two more substitutions. Andy Cook's done absolutely nothing, to be honest. So we'll get Liangle on for him. And I tell you what, Vernon's not really done a fat lot. So we'll get Gilead on as well. Not the biggest fan of Gilead, especially on FIFA. He's quite tall and a bit clunky, but we'll get him on. Again, you know, he's from that area of England, I do believe. Or he definitely lives there with Callum Cook and Andy Cook and the bloody chef Cook. Let's get into the rest of the game. Songo on the ball. Finds it into Callum Cook. Good ball out wide into Aboisa. He cuts it back. Angle with a shot. Oh my God. That's a good opportunity. Not long left to go now in this game. St. Maximum has absolutely left Rydalj in the dust. Hopefully the referee blows for full time. He's not going to blow for full time. It's one last opportunity here for Newcastle. St. Maximum, good defending from Rhys Stornham. I mean, we're well over the allocated time. Songo's gone into the book there for... It was definitely a yellow card. It was, I thought it was going to be red, to be honest. Ball comes in, though towards Callum Wilson, O'Donnell with an easy claim, full time, 1-1, does that mean he goes straight to penalties I believe, I think it does go straight to penalties, I don't think there's a replay in this competition, it goes straight to penalties, this is going to be interesting to say the least, let's go, I like us going first, unfortunately not, we're going second, Wilson steps up, good save from Richard O'Donnell to start, that is what we like to see, Callum Cook then, to put us in front, we're going to aim for that top corner, Callum Cook steps up, and he hits the crossbar. I mean, all right then, FIFA. It's not like it's not like the circle was aimed nowhere near the crossbar or anything. But yeah, Fares, the angle for Bradford City. He's going to fake to go right, and he's going to go down the middle. Thankfully, just about creeps past the goalkeeper. Not being great penalties so far. Matt Ritchie steps up now, and he's saved by O'Donnell. Come on, Gilead to score to put us in front. In the tie. This time just don't hit the crossbar. Alex Gilead. These players are awful at taking penalties. They're absolutely awful. They are absolutely terrible. Oh my god. How have we only scored one penalty when all three have been aimed on target and the keepers saved none of them? Issa now steps up. Good pen. That time that's a good pen. We'll take that from Aboisa. Jolinton now steps up for Newcastle. Oh, and he's put it wide. Wow, we've got a big opportunity there. Here is what I was trying to say, and the pressure falls on the shoulders of Elliot Watt for Bradford City. He absolutely, well he doesn't have to score, but if he scores they're through. He chips the keeper, and it's finished full time. Newcastle 2, Bradford City 3 on penalties. Elliot Watt sends us into the, I don't know what round we're even in anymore, but into the next round of the Carabao Cup. It finished 1-1 in normal time, but on penalties, Elliot Watt is the hero with the little dink. Dubravka goes absolutely flying, what nearly falls over, and we are into the next round of the Carabao Cup. I, we're quite far in the competition at the moment, I don't know if we're quarters, mid semis, I don't know what we're in, I, I don't think it's quite that far in, but we're definitely doing very well. To, I mean, we beat Everton the other week as well, we've now beaten Newcastle, I mean, who says we can't go on and beat a Liverpool and Arsenal? Let's get into the post-match interview. Right then, let's see what the media have to say then. Penalty shootouts are always dramatic. How pleased were you to win? Uh, we stayed focused the whole game. You know, Newcastle, the quality they've got in their team. They should have absolutely ran, ran the floor with us. But thankfully, we didn't. Is your team lacking discipline? Um, winning's what matters. I mean, we picked up maybe three yellow cards. I don't think that means that we're lacking discipline at all, to be honest. Did you prepare, prepare, uh, did you prepare for penalties? Um, we always play to win. Yeah, we, we've gone to Newcastle to win the match. Obviously, that's what every football team should do. Never play for the draw. I mean, our penalties weren't the greatest, were they? Yeah, Issa's development schedule has been completed. I never set anything on him, so I don't really know what that's about. But we've now got a home match against Forest Green. We're back in league action. If we win and Stevenage lose, we go top of the league. Let's get into it. Here we have it then, this is the team that I'm going to be using for this match at home to Forest Green. We've had to rotate slightly because of players like Songo, Issa, Rydhouse, Staunton and Pardy. All just a little bit too tired to start. So we've got O'Donnell starting in goal. A back four of Threlkeld, Kelleher, Canavan and Fold. Sutton and Watt in the midfield. Gilead starts out on the right. Vernum's on the left and Callum Cook is once again in behind Candy, Candy Cook. Andy Cook is what I meant to say. Now Forest Green are actually sat 21st. In the league table, I mean, in real life, they're doing very well. They're absolutely flying at the top of the table. It looks like they're going to be playing a 5-3-2 formation, which 
isn't really ideal. We don't really usually do too well against the five at the back, but we're back at home. It's a must-win game considering they're actually in a relegation battle on the career mode. I mean, they've got some very good players in there, like Cadden, Matt, them sort of players. Forest Green do get us underway, though. Let's get into the highlights. Forest Green passing the ball around. It's like we're not even there right now. Number two's on the ball. He cuts inside, gives it to 14. Loads of space. Shot comes in, and it's in the back of the net. It's Jamil Matt with a goal. And it was just far too easy for Forest Green. They were passing it around us like we literally didn't even exist. It was like a training session there for Forest Green. And just after the half an hour point, it's Bradford City nil. Forest Green Rovers won. Number 11 on the ball here for Forest Green. Not long left to go before half time. It's been a very poor half from ourselves. We've created absolutely nothing. And that is reflected in the match stats. We're going to change formation at half time. Because what we're doing right now simply isn't working. We're going to go to a 442 have we gone past the 442 where's the 442 Liangle is going to come on for Callum Cook it's saying something can't play centre mid we all know he can we're also going to bring on George Sikora for Matty Foldy looking very tired out there and final sub we're going to put Sutton over to right back and we're going to bring Gareth Evans on at central midfield give us a bit more technical ability in Gareth Evans let's get into the second half because things need to improve we've changed formation we've made three changes at the break I need to see a better performance oh my god Forest Green it's just far too easy it's simply far too easy and it's 2-0 we're absolutely all over the place once again we're caught out far too easy we're sleeping we're absolutely caught napping and just after the halftime point, everything that I said at halftime goes completely out of the window because Forest Green pretty much wrap up the game. I can't see us getting back from this. Why the hell is Lee Angle on set pieces? Oh, and he's got to score that chance as well. He's dragged it wide. That absolutely has to go in. It's just not our day, is it? It looks like it's going to be defeat at home yet again. Elliot Watt on the ball gives it to Gareth Evans into Andy Cook. We've earned ourselves a free kick, which Lee Angle will take. Shot comes in. Easy for the Forest Green goalkeeper to save and everything about this game has just simply been far too easy for Forest Green. I mean, we got a much better result than in real life than what we have on FIFA. It's really not gone well for us today. We've not shown up. I can't really remember a chance that we've really had apart from Angle's half chance, which he dragged wide early on just after they scored. Full time at Bradford City nil, Forest Green Rovers 2 and we've got what we thoroughly deserved there. We were absolutely shocking. Let's get into the final match against Sutton. Here we have it then. This is the team that I'm going to be using for this match against Sutton in the first round of the FA Cup. We've got Hornby in goal. A back four of Finkels and Dawson, Pordy O'Connor, Niall Canavan and Liam Reidhalge. Sutton and Watt in the midfield. Gilead on the right. Evans starts out on the left-hand side. An academy player, Sam Roberts, is in behind Lee Angle up front. Sutton, I don't really know much about them, to be honest. They obviously won the National League last season. Now officially in FIFA and you know we've got a, 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 probably a tough outing you know they're doing very well in real life at the moment I don't really know how the how well they're doing in the league table but yeah let's get into this match first round of the FA Cup I do want to do quite well in the FA Cup this year so fingers crossed we can you know brush aside a team like Sutton no disrespect to anything like that but realistically we should be beating them Sutton come forward here 27 puts a great ball out wide to 18 who puts the ball across and number 16, Oluwefe, Oluwefe, however you pronounce his name, he's unfortunately scored and we're behind again. I don't know how we can do so well against Newcastle and struggle against teams like Forest Green and Sutton. It's just not really making sense to me, to be honest. We have the majority of our first team playing. And it's, it's a really well, well worked goal. It's nice play from them, but realistically, we've just got to be defending it better. Lee Angle on the ball, gives it into Sam Roberts, back to Lee Angle who has to score and thankfully, thankfully he does. He's scored one of our only goals away from home in the FA Cup this season in real life. I was trying to think of a way to give Lee Angle some credit. You know, he scored a decent amount of goals for us in real life from the amount of games that he's played and he's got on the score sheet once again here, half an hour on the clock. We are back level. We do definitely need to win this game. The last thing we need is a replay because our fixture congestion is slowly building up. We've got a lot of games coming thick and fast. So we could do with winning this game in the 90 minutes. So we need to go on and get another goal now. Number 20 attacking well for Sutton on his left-hand side. Great pace he's shown there. Good defending though from Finkels and Dawson as we approach half-time. Sutton have a corner. Ball comes in. Number 6 gets there. And I think it's gone onto the top of the net. And I thought that actually nearly went in there. We played it short. From the goal kick, Cousin Dawson on the ball. And that is half-time Sutton 1, Bradford City 1. 
not a bad first half. Apart from the goal we conceded, I think we've done quite well, actually. Let's get in to the second half, then. It will be Sutton to get us under the way. Sutton come forward here on this left-hand side. Number 20 with the ball. Good defending, though, from Finkels and Dawson. And I think it's about time we make some substitutions. We'll get Callum Cook on for Sam Roberts. We'll get... Abolisa on for Gareth Evans. And we also need to get Finkels and Dawson off, who's looking absolutely shattered. So we'll get Matty Folds on for him. Three changes made. Cousin Dawson's actually had quite a good game. He's just lacking that match sharpness, so that's why he is very tired. Half an hour to go. Still 1-1. One, one. Corner ball for Sutton here. Number 10 to take. Ball comes in, and it's headed in to the back of an net. It's John with the goal. He does not like a footballer at all. But just after the hour mark, it's Sutton United 1, Bradford City 2 at... Uh, no, the other way around. Sutton United 2, Bradford City 1. I wish it was the way around. I said it the first time. But again, we've conceded from a set piece. It's just poor defending. You should never be conceding from set pieces. Oh my God, how have we not scored there? Issa with a chance. The two former Scunthorpe players linking up well. I don't know how we've not scored there. 70 minutes on the clock. Issa's on the ball once again. He breaks into the area and he crosses for Callum Cook. Two of the substitutes combining and we're back level just after the 70 minute mark. It's Sutton United 2. Bradford City 2, no more conceding, go and get a winner now, not long left to go now in this game, Sutton come forward late on, good inception though from Paulie O'Connor, it looks like this game is going to be heading for a replay back at Valley Parade, it is indeed full time at Sutton United 2, Bradford City 2 and it is indeed going to be a replay but that might be in the next episode, it depends when that replay is going to be scheduled for. If you have enjoyed watching today's video though, please make sure you drop a like on it. As I said at the start of today's video, if you could hit 15 likes on it, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well, we are now on the road to 200 subscribers on this channel and we're trying to hit that by the end of the year. So if you could subscribe, that would be massively appreciated. Make sure as well to share the video around with your family and friends, help grow the channel as much as possible. Get your post notification bell on as well so you never miss a video of when I upload and I shall see you on Wednesday for another video. Peace.